Welcome to part two of my tutorial for God Hand on Heart. And um, one thing I forgot to mention in the last video was uh, make sure you get that yes ma'am kablam move. It's in the Elvis boss fight. So while you're fighting the first boss, you know, make sure you get it before you kill him. Um, you know, normally it would probably be something you would do instinctually, but if for some reason you forget to do it, um, you're kind of fucked because... For all my boss strategies, most of my boss strategies moving forward, it uses two moves, the Chain Yanker and Yes Ma'am Kablam to heavily exploit the bosses. So if you don't get that, it's probably almost worth you know restarting the entire first level again, which you really don't want to do because it's probably the hardest level in the game. I did add it to this, the uh, description of the, of the uh, part one of the tutorial, so um, hopefully you don't miss that. There's also going to be areas in this second stage that you can skip completely and you don't have to fight any of the enemies. You can just run out and go to the next area. Keep an eye out for those if I fail to mention one. It's basically areas where you don't have to get the keys are areas where you can just run through. You may even want to check a speed run to, uh, to see exactly what areas you can skip. Now you may want to, you know, sometimes you may want to fight and kill enemies to get item drops. Or you may at least want to destroy all the boxes in the area to get item drops. Because you want to bring full roulette and full god hand to the, the uh, next area whenever you can. It's always useful to do that. So that's always a consideration. But I will try to explain the areas that you can skip completely. And, and mention the amount of keys you need before you can leave an area. Uh, generally it seems like the harder enemies are the ones that carry the keys. But I'm not sure if there's some random element to that. I, I think it's fixed. But yeah, starting out, you're going to be fighting a lot of the regular enemies we've been dealing with. But now you're going to have fireballs coming at you. So that can, you know, it can make things a little harder. But sometimes they help you out, I think, by hitting the enemies. You can also try to kick enemies into the fire. Um, and it seems to do a little bit of damage. It can be useful to get them stuck in the fire. It seems to damage them a lot. But I didn't find it hugely useful. For this first part, I liked grouping all these enemies together because these whip bitches with the whips, they are very, very difficult to deal with. They have ranged attack and um, very fast, and they can be very hard to deal with, especially if you have multiple of them. So, as you can see, my life was very low, so I used that and I used the god hand to clear out all this shit. So I'd recommend, you know, killing the first few enemies normally, but when you get to this staircase area with the fire, you know, save it up and group all these enemies together. Use what you have and get that, that first key. And I believe, actually, that's the second key. I think the first key was with those regular enemies in the beginning. And I think that might be all the keys you even need for this area. You might be able to leave now. So keep that in mind that you may only need two keys for this area. If I'm wrong, I'll correct it, but we'll see in a moment. I did, I did just watch this video over and did a little research to try to remember everything because it has been two years. But yeah, once you get the two keys, yeah, you can leave this first area. So you don't have to fight those extra enemies. You know, you can if you want to farm uh, items or whatever, but you don't have to do it. These next areas are not extremely hard to where you really need full god hand and, and roulettes and all that shit. So you don't have to worry too much about that early on. So yeah, I like to eliminate the uh, the whip women first usually out of these groups because they're they're extremely irritating. They have long range attacks and they're very fast. And this is just your typical asshole that we've been dealing with. Yeah, whenever you see those whip women, though, throw shit at them. Just try to take them out first. You can do a lot of damage by throwing boxes at people, especially if the box hits and uh, during a vulnerable um, animation. It counts as a counter move, and it does very high damage. Also, they'll get down on their knees, and you can, um, if you hit circle fast enough, can just spank them and get that god meter up and heavily damage them. So, I think you have to react really fast to get the spank, though. If you don't do it, then I think they'll get up because they're trying to lure, you, they're trying to bait you to attack them, and then they will sometimes hit you before you get a chance. But it's easy enough. You know, getting one of them 
alone is not is not difficult, but when you have multiple of those women with whips and other enemies. Generally in this game on hard mode, whenever you get more than two enemies at the same time, you know, it can get potentially very dangerous. So crowd control really is essential for this mode. It can be deceptive, but that is a ground move that you can use to do a lot of damage if you just have one enemy to deal with. I think it's a very simple move to pull off. I don't remember exactly how it's done, though. See, I, because I haven't played this in two years, so... You know, every, not every move I do is going to be clear to me. But there's very in-depth uh, move lists, you know, on game facts that you can check to get all the moves. It does help to, to know as many moves as you can just to try different things and experiment. Because your play style may be very different than mine. A lot of people play very differently, so... As I said, I like to backflip a lot. And then I like to close the distance with jump kicks and get back in combo and then retreat back with backflips. But I don't really see anybody else doing that. So um, you may find a style you like better. You can also sidestep, but sidestepping tends to work better in specific scenarios. Basically with your right analog stick, you probably know this if you beat normal, but the right analog stick will allow you to do three different types of dodges. You have your sidestep, which you can do by hitting left or right on the right analog. If you hit up, you'll do a, uh, a bobbing and weaving in place type of dodge. That gives you invincibility frames as long as you're doing it, but it does not protect you from low attacks and other certain types of attacks like grabs. Now, most grabs you can get out of by jiggling the left analog stick if you're fast enough. And, of course, if you hit down on the right analog stick, you have your backflips to get away. So um, I, I normally mainly use the backflip. I might use a sidestep for very specific scenarios. Very rarely, and the up dodge for, you know, very, very specific scenarios. If I get cornered or, you know, and can't backflip or certain types of enemies, like the doors you have to fight. So for this part, I believe you only need three keys and then you can exit. So um, if you know what enemies to target, I think it's the, the larger enemies that have the keys. Like that guy with the club and there's other similar looking enemies. I think those are the ones that usually have the keys. So if you know what enemies to target, you could probably take them out first and grab all three keys. Once you have all three keys, you can go to where it said next area and leave the stage. Keep in mind, I didn't know the fastest way to beat these levels or exactly when I could leave. I don't think I really did much research into it when doing my hard run. Otherwise, I would have used those speedrun techniques, you know, to skip areas. Because I was just trying to beat the game and there's no sense fighting enemies for no reason, really. I mean, there's better ways to get items a lot of times. Of course, you need to kill the guys with the keys, though, because you need the keys to exit. But once you get all three keys, you can just go to the exit door and skip the remaining enemies. You can see I barely beat this section. I was on almost no life for a very long time. But, yeah, once you get that... Just run past whoever's left. And soon, a little bit later on, we're going to get the Chain Yanker, which is going to be the final piece of the puzzle for exploiting the bosses. You want that and the Yes Ma'am uh, yes, ma Kablam, I think it's called, that you get during the Elvis boss fight. So, as I said, hopefully you grab that treasure chest in the, in the Elvis boss fight because you'll get it there. Since all my footage was basically just showing, you know, the, the combat and gameplay, I didn't show menus and I didn't show collecting a lot of the items. So when I um, did the voiceover on the first tutorial, you know, I didn't remember where I got that, that yes ma'am kablam, especially since it was two years ago. So I've been doing a little research and, and trying to make these videos, uh, you know, trying to break the details down, even though it's been a while. I don't know why the game auto-targeted that um, that pillar in the middle when I threw that torch, but um, for this area, I think you may have to defeat most of the enemies because you get cutscenes, I think, based on how many enemies you kill, unless it's timer-based, but I think it's probably based on killing the enemies. I'm not 100% sure on that. If you really want to know how to progress the levels faster and skip shit, you know, check over a speed run for each level. And that'll give you... Because the speed run is only an hour for the whole game, so you can easily just check the level you're on and just, you know, watch it for 10 minutes or whatever. And 
uh, you'll be able to see what areas you can skip. So that you may find that useful if you don't want to do extra combat. Because for just beating the game, it's not like you get experience points for fighting guys. So, uh, and money you can get in between the levels. You know, you can go to the gambling casino area and just keep loading and saving on the Chihuahua race and get a shit ton of money. So, you know, farming farming enemies for money is not the way to do it. There's also attacks like when you get knocked down and you get up, you can get up with an attack, which you saw me do. I think it's very simple to do those moves, but I don't, like I said, I don't remember like all the, all the little moves and stuff like that. So shit like that is what you're going to want to look into. You know, you should definitely be checking a move list anyway, if you're going to be doing hard. I mean, I'd have to make a whole video just talking about moves to, to really cover that. I kind of figured it out as I went along, and, you know, I would check guides for moves, but um, that was a while ago. Now, there is a, there is a fairy, see, right there. Um, it's floating in the middle of the arena. It's an orange, has an orange flame around it. It's a little fairy. At any time, you can create a checkpoint by going into that arena and committing suicide on the, on the, you don't have to do the arena fights. Don't bother. You don't get anything worthwhile. You'll get some money, but you don't, you really don't need it. So, unless you're trying to complete all the challenges or whatever. Don't worry about it. Just go in. Uh, you know, if you kill a few enemies, go and commit suicide and get a checkpoint. But I don't think you need to do that here because I think I think this area is completely skippable. What I mean is you can run to that back door immediately and just exit the stage and not fight any enemies. So that's when I say, you know, there are areas that you can completely skip. Now, what you may want to do is you may, you may want to just run and just destroy all the boxes at least to make sure you got all the items. If you didn't get any items that you, you know, if you didn't get all the kind of item drops that you wanted, you can commit suicide, redo this area, and see what kind of item drops you get next time. You can just keep doing that until you get the item drops you want. And if you do it long enough, you'll have full roulettes, most likely, and full god hand meter, if that's what you want to do. You don't really need it right away because the next areas are not particularly difficult, but it never hurts that to have it filled up. But yeah, this was all completely unnecessary combat. But see, I didn't. There's a lot of shit I didn't know when playing through this. I should have actually checked the speed run before I did some of these areas just so I could have skipped through, but this was just my hard playthrough and I'm just doing commentary over it. It wasn't designed to be a tutorial, but there is a lot of information that uh, I found a lot of, you know, easier methods to deal with shit. So there's a lot of things I can break down. But yeah, I mean, when you play, don't don't bother fighting all these guys unless you want to. If I were to play through it again on hard, I mean, I probably would have just skipped all optional encounters and just, you know, stuck to the basics. That's usually what I do. I usually don't play shit that has no purpose. I'll pretty much skip anything I can normally. If I am fighting enemies, it's probably one, because I don't know what I can skip at that time. Or two, I'm trying to farm items for some reason. But I don't know if that was the case here. I think I probably just didn't know I could leave. But again, it was a while ago, so I can't remember where my mind was at at the time. But yeah, so you can just do that the whole time. You don't have to fight any of those guys. Make sure that you did go to the shop at some point and upgraded your health and your god hand meter and roulettes and all that shit to the maximum available. You can't do max upgrades early in the game, but you can um, you can always upgrade to the max that's available at that time. So make sure you you know you just get, you buy those juice items. It tells you what they do. So just make sure you buy all that shit. And there may be some moves that you want to buy and experiment with. But like I said, I found a lot of the more complex moves were just overkill. And I didn't, I really didn't need them. I, I keep a basic uh, combo layout of just like quick attacks for my square, my square hits. The square button. For this part, I think you do need to kill these two assholes with the knives to get the key. So... These guys can be a pain in the ass. You want to destroy the pillars first so they obviously can't stay up there and throw shit at you. So, you know, 
get them down first and then just beat the shit out of them. But you want to you want to be aggressive with them because they have some very dangerous attacks. I don't recommend using any uh, any of your god meter or roulettes on this part. I recommend just dying before you use anything because uh, you really you don't want to be wasteful in this mode. And this part is really not that difficult, so you know you'll get it eventually. I believe you have to kill both of these guys before the key appears, but again, a speedrunner would be more familiar with exactly what you need to do to progress. But I do believe that's the case. Yeah, so once you get that one key, you can you can then leave. So if you happen to get it early, you can just run out, but I don't think that'll happen. In the other areas, I think you can get the keys early if you target the larger enemies first. I think those are always the ones with the keys, but again, I'm not certain about that. So that's why I really recommend checking out a speed run if you really, really want to, you know, if you really don't want to do any unnecessary combat, then just glance over a speed run for five or ten minutes to see the, the area you're on. So yeah, you get explosive barrel here if you want to use it on these guys. The goal here is basically going to be to destroy this machine boss. So whenever you get a chance, you want to land shots on the arms. Now, if you're unlucky, demons will appear like this. I don't know if the demon is scripted and always appears or if it was just bad luck. Sometimes they you know, will or won't appear. It, it can be random, but I think certain ones always come out. But I'm not sure if that's the case with this one. But the main idea is going to be, you know, you can probably ignore most of these basic enemies and just focus on the machine if possible, but they will be all over your ass. So you may want to kill them just to get them off your ass. So you can, you know, you can decide not to do that, but that divine attack is a good area of effect attack early on. So it's good to group them together and do that if you're having some trouble. Don't worry about wasting your, uh, your various items here because this is a pretty hard fight, so... I wouldn't worry about it. You, you'll you'll be able to get more shit later on. But yeah, you mainly want to focus on taking the, the two arms off of the boss. And then there's a door you can destroy to get a key, I believe. But I don't know if you can get that key early while the boss is still alive. I don't think you can just bypass the boss fight. I kind of doubt the game would let you do that. So I'm guessing you probably have to. But, I, you know, again, I'm not... I'm not 100% sure on that. But yeah, try to kill these two arms. Clear out the enemies that are causing you a problem, obviously. There's a lot of enemies that come up in this area. Don't pick up items you don't need, obviously, unless you have room to store the uh, the roulettes or whatever. You don't want to like pick up something that you know gives you two or three roulettes and when you have a, a full meter, obviously, or you're only missing one. Want to make sure you get use out of all your your roulettes. God hand. There's a lot of barrels and shit that you can throw at enemies, so that can thin things out a little bit. But yeah, if you can get some of that god hand on the uh, claw, it really does a lot of damage to it. And if you do die a lot, sometimes it just makes a big difference depending on what pickups you get, you know, in this area. Bosses usually have a lot of barrels and shit, luckily, and eventually you can get really good pickups if you die enough. It's random each time, so sometimes you can get really good shit. So there's always some hope if you're having trouble that you'll you'll get better pickups. It, it makes it kind of addictive to keep trying because, you know, you know, next time you may get some really good shit. And it might give you that little bit of an edge you need to beat it the next time. You can also go up here and you can fight the boss up here as well. The claws will attack you up here and you can counter them. Which sometimes you may find it easier to do that. Because, you know, if the enemies aren't up there, you may be able to get some hits in before the enemies appear. So you may want to switch up and down different areas. If the enemies are causing a problem and you don't want to clear them out right away, then you can try doing that. 
I believe I take out both claws first before I go for the door that you have to attack. I'm not sure why exactly I did it in that order, but it might be because you have to destroy this boss anyway. It really takes a lot of damage from the from the melee weapons. So if you grab these lampposts and also the god hand, obviously. It's probably better not to use the god hand on it unless there's enemies around you and it happens to be down. God hand is always better to use most of the time when, when you have a, a enemy surrounding you so you can hit multiple enemies at once to get more use out of, you know, more damage overall. You know, unless you're fighting a, a hard boss or something. Luckily now you can extract God Hand from bosses with these two moves. Well, you don't have the Chain Yanker yet, but you'll see. I'll show you exactly where to get that. And as I said, you get that Yes Ma'am Kablam at the end of the previous level on the uh, Elvis fight in the chest. It didn't show up in my video because I only show my successful attempts. And uh, by the time I beat the Elvis fight, you know, I had already gotten it and died. And you get to keep stuff when you die. So when I open the chest again, there would just be a coin in there. So it won't, you know, it's not going to show what I originally got in there, but um, I did put a note in the, you know, in the description of the previous video, so hopefully players will catch that. So yeah, now I believe you can't exit here until you get the key, so in order to get the key, you have to go up. There's a door that you have to fight. And maybe the first time that shows up in, the, in this uh, game at this point. There's probably some wandering around as I wasn't probably sure exactly what I needed to do, you know, at this point. Doesn't hurt to have a fucking lamppost on, you know, in case you need to smack somebody around. I think I was oblivious to the fact that I had to go up on the second floor. But uh, eventually it does come to me. I'm also kind of anal about picking up, you know, boxes and, and items and shit like that. Make sure I got everything. So I do a lot of double checking and shit like that. Especially because I'm bad with, uh, got a bad sense of direction. I think it's up here somewhere, if I remember right. Ah, yeah, here it is. I don't think smacking this with the lamppost is going to work out too well. But, uh, maybe it did. Okay, so yeah, if you want, you can just throw the lamppost at it and break it instantly. Oh, yeah, I guess I was being extra careful. I made sure I had another lamppost on me. I guess I figured there was going to be more enemies inside that door. As usual, there usually is enemies inside every door, so. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to take your time and make sure you have shit on you. Like, you know, grab another fucking... There's tons of those lampposts. So, yeah, throwing them does massive damage, but, you know, so sort of slapping them around. I think I was fucking around with the enemy, so, you know, running off. A lot of times if you switch from, you know, especially with ladders, if there's ladders in an area, you can climb up and down constantly and the enemies will be busy climbing up the ladders and you can get extra hits on them and pull a lot of bullshit, which you'll see me do later. For some reason, I decided to use a roulette on this guy. Maybe I didn't want to fuck around because, um, you know, the boss was not too easy. Or I may have died on this guy before, possibly, but for whatever reason, I decided to use my roulettes. I think that guy is not an easy enemy, so you may want to. I don't think there's there's really anything that hard after this, immediately after this fight. So if you do waste it, you'll you know you won't be in huge trouble if you waste all your shit on this fight. I think now I just went up to double check. But yeah, once you have the key, you know, you can leave this area. I 
I definitely should have edited this shit down. <laughs> but, you know, feel free to skip ahead, obviously. But, yeah, now I finally got to the next area. So now here's where you get the chain yanker, which is extremely, extremely important if you're going to follow my strategies for the bosses, you know, because that, that's really where it's going to be heavily used. But it's also useful on, you know, hard enemy encounters later on and shit like that, but especially on bosses. So yeah, kill these enemies first. But after you're done with that, you're going to rescue somebody that's hidden under the floor. It's not hard to do, but, you know, you want to make sure you get it. Yeah, if you don't get this move, there's I don't think there's any chance to ever get it back. Just like the uh, Yes Ma'am Kablam move. So, yeah, activate that slightly hidden switch. And now you're going to see some woman getting beaten up. So you're going to have to deal with some of these whip bitches again. So, you know. Do whatever you want to deal with them. I recommend taking them out first before any other enemies. There's a regular punk in there too, but the the uh, the, the ones with the whips are always the most dangerous to me usually, so take them out first. The jump kicks can hit multiple and stun enemies, so you know that's useful. Crowd control technique of backflipping back and then coming in with a jump kick is extremely effective in this game. So yeah, once you eliminate these assholes, talk to the woman on the ground. Now if somehow you fail and she dies or um, you fuck this up somehow, make sure you reset because you want to make sure you rescue her. So either commit suicide or reload the last checkpoint or save. Because, you know, after that you got to talk to her and get the chain yanker. You pretty much, you know, you need this to, if you're going to use my guide, it's pretty much essential. And you'll see exactly how effective it can be with that yes ma'am kablam in a moment because soon the, the uh, next boss fight will be coming up. So yeah, I did die here. I, I guess I either probably forgot to edit that out. Or I may have just been showing that I got the move and then died. Just to illustrate that when you get something and die, you still keep it. So that includes money, moves, whatever you pick up and then die, you get to keep it. So... Um, Aside from maybe like roulettes or something like that. I don't know if you can gather a bunch of roulettes and commit suicide and keep a full uh, roulette uh, meter. But, you know, permanent items. You will you will keep them when you die. Much like Dark Souls. But, uh... Now for this area... I think this is another area where I stayed here much longer than I had to. But I think you may need a few keys before you can exit this area, if I remember right. I did just watch this video, but sometimes it's hard to remember, um, you know, exactly what areas had three keys, two keys, one key, etc. So that's why I say, you know, if you really want to make sure, you know, just check over a speed run of the level. Some of these enemies can be hard, like these large enemies that usually have clubs. Of course, if you can get the club, you can pull a lot of bullshit with it and do a lot of damage. It's usually these larger, taller enemies with the clubs that have the keys. So, um, if you wanted to get out of here fast, I would guess that you would have to kill those guys and just grab the keys and ignore the other enemies. You know, if you if you were in a real rush... But it probably won't save you that much time because the regular enemies are not that hard. It's mainly the combination. Of course, anytime you get a guy in a stun animation, utilize it. To get some extra damage and charge up your god meter. But yeah, you can play very carefully by backflipping, coming back in with the jump kicks and getting some combos and retreating back. Make sure you use all the barrels and shit like that to get as much damage as you can. 
it's better if you can have the barrels auto target to the harder enemies, you know, instead of wasting them on the easier guys. But sometimes it's hard to control exactly where the game auto targets your throws to. Because pretty much throwing barrels at enemies is all auto targeted by the game, so you have to kind of manipulate that if you want to hit specific enemies. It can be a little tricky. You'll get an idea of which way you, you know your, your character are depending on how many enemies are in a group. You know, the enemy closest to you is probably the one that's going to get the barrel thrown at it, but sometimes it's a little finicky. But yeah, guard breaks work really good on these guys and retreating. And, you know, if you can get in a lot of hits on them before retreating and guard breaks, then you can get them in that stagger and you'll kill them a lot faster. Which is pretty much one of the main mechanics of the game is staggering enemies. So yeah, here I have two keys. I think that may be all the keys you need to exit the level. But I usually just check to see if there's any shit I missed. So now here you have these three freaks you have to beat. Now you're going to see how this method for the first time is useful with Chain Yanker and Yes Ma'am Kablam. I'm going to explain that. And this is the method we're going to be using throughout most of the game on all the boss fights. Most of them anyway. So I will be explaining this probably another 20 times or so anyway, but... You know, it's going to be hard to miss in this tutorial, but this will be soon ending this uh, part two, showing the full second stage. I'm going to have this divided into eight parts. Each part is going to show a full stage. I think that's the best way to do it. So yeah, make sure you get all your upgrades. So now for this part, for this first guy, you can minimize fighting him as much as possible. I'm not going to be using Chain Yanker yet on this first guy. I'm not going to waste my roulettes on this asshole. But yeah, initially I got in a bunch of hits and got him into a stun animation and did a ton of damage. So you might be able to rush him and do that initially. Again, this is a little rusty because it's been a long time. But what I mostly damaged this guy with was I just threw all the boxes at him. So I pretty much almost skipped this fight by just running around throwing boxes at him the whole time. So I do recommend doing that because then for the harder guys we're going to use the roulettes. Now depending on how much gear you have, you know, roulettes and all that shit... We'll make it either easier or harder starting out, but um, eventually you'll get really good item drops if you die enough times because the item drops, like I said, are randomized. So eventually you're going to break barrels and get really good shit. So either way, this technique should end up working for you eventually. You may have to improvise in some areas if you don't have enough roulettes, but we're going to be charging up that god hand meter a bunch of times by using this technique. It's very simple to do once you understand it. Maybe a little difficult to explain, but very easy. Now, here's the second guy coming out. This is where we're going to start using Chain Yanker and kind of dodge this fight as well. We're not going to be fighting this guy normally much at all either. So what you do is you use your Chain Yanker roulette. It yanks the guy in, and then you use Yes Ma'am Kablam move. You use that um, while the guy is stunned. You can only use it two times. That's all you have time to do. But it, it'll build up your god hand meter every time you reach into the guy's chest. So each time you reach into the guy's chest, hit up on the right analog stick to do a dodge real fast. That's going to break the animation and allow you to do a second yes ma'am kablam move and extract with your hand again to get more god meter. And then you're going to dodge out of it again. When you see him doing his little taunt at the end of the uh, meter, you'll learn exactly when you can dodge to, get, get, to do it as fast as possible. But you're only going to be able to get two extractions per stun. So I'm going to try to explain that again to make sure that it's clear. But that's going to be a huge technique that's going to be used for most of the bosses in the game. So using that is going to open up the entire game, make it a lot easier. So yeah, use Chain Yanker. Yank him in. Now use now after that, use Yes Ma'am Kablam. When your, your fist hits his chest, boom, that's extracting the God Hand. Immediately hit up on the right analog stick to up, you know, to dodge, do the up dodge. And that's going to break the animation. Then do Yes Ma'am Kablam immediately again while the enemy is still in that stun animation. And then, after you finish doing that, hit circle and utilize that stun, that, that stun damage that you can do. You, know, you, do, you always do two extractions. This applies for bosses and every enemy in the game. So, Because um, the Chain Yanker always puts the enemy in that s stun lock. See, you do that, the enemy is now in stun state. So instead of hitting circle, you do two extractions. After each extraction, you, you hit up on the right analog stick to dodge out of it, break the animation. 
and you'll get two that way, two extractions. And yeah, then you, and then you take it, then you immediately hit circle to go into and do that extra damage, and that's going to build up your god meter extreme, because you're going to get two extractions that that build up god meter. Then you're going to get the you know you're going to take advantage of that stun animation. And if she goes down on her on her on the ground like that, you can immediately do that spanking shit and build up your god meter again. So that's an extra chance to do that. And she was the one that I actually fought directly the most. But you see, I didn't have to even fight her that much. I fought her mostly like a normal enemy, and I used tons of chain yankers and extractions. And yeah, it's it's that easy once you once you have that down. Um, you know, you're good to go for the rest of the game on all the boss fights, pretty much. You can use that on pretty much every boss fight. There's only a few where it doesn't work. There may only be, like, one boss fight where it doesn't work. I mean, pretty much most of the... That'll get you through a lot of shit. So, if you have any questions about that, just ask me. I'm glad to explain it. It is a little uh, complicated to explain, but hopefully that was clear. Yeah, the main thing on the bosses is building that god hand meter and just uh, beating the shit out of the enemies, which then puts them in a staggered state from hitting them so much with the god hand. So it's like it all combos together and you end up doing massive damage on bosses. The combination of that whole um, back and forth pattern of using chain yanker, yes ma'am, kablam, god hand, and then repeating it and taking advantage of all the stagger animations with circle, you know, by, by doing that, you can give most bosses not even a chance to really attack. So it does simplify things a lot. So if you want, you can use your area attacks here because you already beat the bosses. And this is near the end of the level. So the area attacks work good in this small area when everyone's grouped together because this is a hard combination of enemies to deal with. You can also use the ladders if you want by going up and down the ladders constantly and having enemies jump up to try to get to you and then hitting them with a jump kick or a combo. You can really exploit the ladders, but I didn't really find out about that till later on, I don't think. So yeah, when you fight these doors, this is one of the rare incidents where I recommend using the up dodge when the thing closes because it's a lot better than backflipping. You'll, you'll get more consistent damage and beat the door quicker. You can use the backflips if you're more comfortable with that, but... The up dodge I found is easy to time. You know, it gives you a lot of invincibility. You can keep doing up dodge. You don't just have to hit it once. You just keep doing it and you'll keep bobbing around. You'll be completely invincible to upper attacks. So you can utilize that very easily. Doors very easy. The doors can be hard if there's other enemies around, so you really want to clear out the enemies. I'm going to find it a lot easier to deal with the door that way. Once you open the door, you hit the switch and you open the other door, which lets you exit out of this area. And then we do have one more boss fight, but uh, it's not especially difficult. Elvis shows up again. But, you know, as usual, you do have a lot of item drops, so eventually you'll get good items out of the barrels. Of course, if you wanted to, you could have saved up your stuff and, and not use those area of attack and saved up your roulettes and all that shit for this fight. You know, that's always... It's always smart to do that if you're not having too much trouble with an area. It's better to just um, do it the hard way and, and save more shit. But either way, we now have the chain yanker and the yes ma'am kablam combo, which is going to, like I said, it's going to destroy all bosses pretty much. So as long as you get a few roulettes... You're going to be getting your god hand, and you'll, you'll be able to pull a lot of bullshit with that. So it should just be a matter of time. Of course, you want to deal with these enemies. Get rid of the regular enemies, because Elvis will retreat until you kill the regular enemies. These guys can be tricky, but it's still pretty much the same standard techniques we've been using. So yeah, see, and they can give good drops. I got multiple roulette. Uh, refill right there so that's really good because once you have a few roulettes that you can use you can just keep using that chain yanker yes ma'am kablam combo and with god hand and just destroy everything so yeah if you have your god hand meter full by now then you know just use it on them 
get some good damage in, and then use that stun animation to hit circle and do some extra damage if you can get that in. But once you've exhausted that, you can fight them a little bit normally if you want, and then you can retreat and start using the chain yankers. It's good to fight them a little bit normally to do some extra damage, but once your life is starting to get low, don't be afraid to start using the chain yankers and shit. So yeah, same thing. Reach into his chest twice with the yes ma'am kablam. Make sure you cancel the animation with up dodge on the right analog stick after each uh, chest grab. Now use chain yanker again. Do the same shit again. And god hand meters are ready, ready to use. And now you can continue with this pummel to fill it up even more and do a little extra damage. Because that way you get the maximum out of the stun animation. You get the maximum amount of god hand and you get the maximum amount of damage because you use the stun just about as the stun lock is about to end. You grab them with circle and do the stun uh, stun damage. So that's why this this whole cycle will, will keep you alive. And it's going to be rinse and repeat for most of the boss fights. And then, you know, soon my god meter will be, you know, full again from doing this again. And then that'll be pretty much it for this fight. Now we can use god hand to finish him off. So hopefully you get a feel for this technique. And if not, you'll, you'll, um, you'll be seeing this a lot throughout the entire tutorial. So definitely get used to doing this. If you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for watching.